This is Mrs. O'Neill for AP Chemistry, Chapter 14, Section 4, The Change of Concentration with Time. You're going to learn that rate equations can be written to express how concentrations change with time and look at several examples of rate equations. More in particular, just like we've talked about in the past, zero order, first order, and second order reactions. So we talked about rate as a function of reactant concentrations already, but now we want to relate this reactant concentration as a function of time. So what do we mean by that? So we need to consider what's called the integrated rate. The rate law expresses rate as a function of reactant concentration at an instant in time, hence the instantaneous rate. However, this integrated rates express the reactant concentration as a function of time. So really what we've learned so far is the rate law. And the rate law is just really what happens right away, that instant that the reactants mix, right? It's that instant that that occurs. Or like we've seen before, the instant on a particular uh, part of the graph, right? But really rate law is just what happens as soon as those reactants are mixed. The integrated rate uh, expresses how this reactant concentration really happens over a course of time. So it's, it's slightly different. So pause the video, put in the notes in your packet, put in the words in your packet, and then play to hear my words. So, so far we talked about the differential rate law, the rate law that you know describes how rate depends on the concentration. However, we know that also concentration is going to depend on time. So yes, we know that in the very beginning, the concentration of a reactant decreases quickly because the reaction is happening quickly. And then kind of, you know, slowly um, the reaction does not happen because there's not as much reactant in there. So as the, the concentration of those reactants uh, decreases, so does the um, products, right? The, the products aren't being made as fast. So for each type of this differential rate law, there's also what's called an integrated rate law. And so these rate laws actually help us better understand what's called a reaction mechanism, which we'll get to. So first order, you already know this, right? The rate is going to depend on that concentration to the first power. So this is what that first order reaction graph looks like. So pause the video, look it over, read the information, and hopefully that makes sense as far as the initial rate when it first is mixed versus what happens over a period of time. So we like to always analyze this data. So the reaction was done multiple times, and then we have to see this data on the next slide for this N2O5 turning into NO2 and O2. So the concentration of the reactant was varied, and that initial reaction rate was recorded. So this is the data that we get. So these are the concentrations. This is how time uh, that we measured right away. And of course, this graph is what's produced. So to find rate, we have to find the slope again at two points. In other words, we're going to use that tangent method. So they'd have to give you this kind of graph, or they'd have to give you information in order for you to answer any kind of problem that deals with this. So let's say we're talking about the rate at um, 0.8 uh, molarity. Okay, so again, we do our change in concentration over our change in time, and we get this value. But that's going to be just at that one particular spot. So let's do another spot as well. So now we're going to do 0.4 uh, molar concentration, and we get a different rate. Okay, so what happens is the rate is twice as fast. So the concentration is twice as big as the rate law must be. And again, we've seen that before. So first power, right? So if we kind of plug and chug, that's what we would get. We would get rate equals K, which is that reactant constant. I'm sorry, the reaction constant. And we get the concentration of N2O5. So we can say that this is first order, okay? So the only way to determine this, again, is to run that experiment. So here's our first order reaction. This is what you're used to. This, however, is on your reference sheet. 
And this is telling us that the natural log of the concentration of A at any time minus the natural log of the concentration at the very beginning, okay, zero meaning in the beginning, T meaning final, whatever time we choose, equals the negative constant times our actual time. So on your reference sheet, dig that out, make sure that you can find that that first equation listed on your reference sheet under kinetics is actually the first order, and that's how I like to remember it. First equation, first order reaction, and it's going to be really important because sometimes they give you a graph and they say what order is it and then solve the information. And if you don't know what order it is according to the graph or the information they give you or the rate law that you um, come up with, then you're not going to know to use this particular equation to solve the problem. So second order, again, you already know this information that the rate is going to depend on a second power, either one reactant or two reactants each to the first power. So again, this is what you're used to seeing already in this chapter, but this is what's on your reference sheet, and it's the second equation. So again, in my mind, it's the second equation, meaning the second order. So it's one over the concentration of an A, um, to some in some time frame minus one over the concentration of a in the very beginning equals k times your time k times t so again second order listed second order reaction zero order reaction however right concentration raised to the zero power is equal to one so the rate of that zero order reaction is constant so it's independent of concentration, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much stuff we put in there. If it's a zero order reaction, it's just gonna keep on going at the same rate, right? So rate does not change with concentration. It does not matter how much concentration we put in there, the rate of reaction is always going to be the same. So now let's look at this again. Most often when reaction happens on a surface, because the surface stays constant. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. So if we take any kind of like, let's say metal, and we wanna put a reaction on that metal, um, the, the, the metal is not going to change, so it's going to stay constant. That surface area is always going to be there. So that's an example of a zero-order rate, rate law reaction. And this also applies to that enzyme chemistry that we talked about before um, in your stomach, like the enzymes that help digest and break down that food. So here's your zero order. This one is actually not on the AP um, exes, exam or the AP um, reference sheet because it, it doesn't really kind of exist, right? Think about that zero order. That means everything stays the same. So this is a recap. And again, there's that zero order. The rate is going to equal K. So they're not too, um, they're not going to be too worried about it. Just know that it exists. There is an integrated rate law uh, from the graph. If you want to write that down, that's fine. Uh, but it's not on your reference sheet. So they really concentrate more on first order reactions and second order reactions. And again, we already talked about the relationship between that concentration and rate. So then what's half-life? Well, half-life is the time required for concentration of a reactant to drop half hmm, of its initial value. So again, it's not on the reference sheet, but this is, this is on your reference sheet. So it says half time, or I'm sorry, um, uh, your um, half-life for a first order reaction is 0.693 divided by your constant. Um, so this is for the second order. Again, I give you that information. It's not on your reference sheet. I have yet to see them uh, use that. And if they do, they would actually have to give you that equation. So let's give this some thought. Pause the video, read over this, and see if you now understand half-lives before I give you the answer and the solution. The answer is 1.25, and what really is happening is this. You take 10 divided by 2, that would be one half-life. 5 divided by 2, that'd be second half-life. And 2.5 divided by 2 would be that third half-life. So every time we divide the concentration in half, that's considered a half-life. So it'd be 1, 2, 3 half-lives. Can you answer this? Hopefully that makes sense, okay? I've got, of course, as we increase the reaction order, we're increasing um, what goes along with it. So now let's look at, if you can look at a graph and determine what order it is. So what are some things or what are some, what's the important thing to look at? Well, first, what is plotted? What's on the axis? And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And again, what does that slope look like? So you know that there could be a positive slope or a negative slope. So if you know this, you will be able to determine the order of 
um, of that rate constant. So let's look at this. So here's our zero order. And I would pause a later um, after I explain it. And you should have a spot in your notes to draw this and label this in your notes. So how do we know that this is a zero order? Well, we have regular concentration and our slope is negative. Oops, sorry, went too fast there. And our slope is negative. So because I have a regular concentration and we have a negative slope, if they were to give you some kind of graph like this, bada bing, bada boom, it is zero order for our concentration of A. But now let's look at first order reaction. So what's different here? Well, a couple of things. First thing is that it's the natural log of the concentration and it's a negative slope, okay? And this is on your reference sheet. The first equation on your reference sheet under kinetics is the first order reaction and equals negative K. So that's also something to think about, right? That's where that negative slope comes from. So pause the video and make sure to draw and label some of this information in your notes. And the second order, what's different? Aha, now we have one over the concentration of A should look very familiar to that equation on your reference sheet. And now it's a positive slope. And guess what? On your reference sheet, it's a positive K, right? It's uh, the, the information equals the positive K value. So pause, draw, label, make sure that you're understanding how to analyze these uh, graphs because sometimes they just give you a graph or they say the reaction is first order, which graph would it be represented by? So actually I do have some multiple choice AP practice questions. So pause the video, read this over, see if you can get an answer for one, two, three, and four, and also the why, because I do give you a why, even though this is multiple choice, Make sure that you understand the why uh, your answers are the way they are. So number one, did you get the answer of E? And that's the information as to why. And again, if you're not understanding this now, please come see me during class or ask questions during our class discussions. Number two, did you get D? Three, Answer is D. And look, they're even giving you some kind of an equation there as your explanation. So can you kind of plug and chug and, and make sure that that makes sense? Number four, B. Again, just kind of plugging and chugging and seeing if that makes sense. Five, did you get letter C here? Again, that's just a simple multiple choice question and all it's asking you to do is visualizing those graphs um, and putting in that into this information. Number six, again, analyzing a graph. Pause. Answer is B. And hopefully that makes sense to you if you read the information there, the explanation. Okay, we will see you in class and hopefully it will make a little bit better sense uh, when we're doing the book work.